Hi friends, we got another Beautylish gift card event and this one is for their spring event. They have this biannually and if you're not familiar with the gift card event from Beautylish, every $100 you spend, you receive $20 in gift card money from Beautylish in return. A lot of people wait for this event because it happens twice a year and if you have an eye on a high ticket item, you could get a little $20, $40, $60 off. You never know. Depends on how much you spend. In addition to the gift card per Beautylish also curates exclusive bundles for this event. Other discounts are happening, so it's fun to shop around. It's happening for three days and it starts today at this moment, 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. for my PT peeps, and it ends on the 24th, basically at midnight. But because they're PT 1159, that means it will end ET time on 3 a.m. Is that correct? You have time to shop. You have time to add to your basket. You have time to deliberate with yourself. I wanted to share some of my picks that Beautylish was kind enough to send because I had my eye on a few of these items. And if it's your first time here, I'm rather thorough. My videos are long, which is why I provided timestamps for each product. You could skim over, pick whatever item you had your eye on, take a look at that clip, and then go. You, it's fine. You don't have to watch the entire thing. Because I am so thorough, I most likely will film individual items for some of these products because I like to get into the nitty gritty and instead of this video being two hours long, maybe it's like 45 minutes to an hour long. So if you notice that I'm not getting as detailed as I usually do, it's because I'm aiming to be a little more time efficient with all the b-roll that I recorded with a lot of these brushes that I requested. The groundwork palette from Danessa Myricks. So let's get into it. Here is some b-roll of the products I selected. You know I had to go with Sonia G's Traditions Select Collection, a small curation of four brushes with various bristle types. I also asked for the Wayne Goss brush set. It's not in this roll because I didn't wash them yet, but you'll see them with the close-ups. As you see here, we asked for the Hourglass Matte Lipstick as well as the Surat Souffle Eyeshadow in Gridu. I failed to capture B-roll with this camera, but I will capture some with my iPhone. I know it is not the same, but so you can see it in action regardless. I had to ask for Natasha Denona's mini pastel because I absolutely fell in love with mini triochrome and had to try the mini pastel curation. We have Danessa's groundwork palette in Defining Neutrals. Can't wait to show the B-roll using that. In addition to her newer product, the Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum, I would like to use this more. I used it once and what it's meant to do is to provide more of a matte finish on the skin because she had explained on her Teach Me Tuesdays when revealing this product alongside her balm product that's more for the hydrating conditions that one is looking for. The Universal Blurring Balm apparently is hard to restock. So Danessa wanted to create products that deliver what the Universal Blurring Balm did, but I guess easier to manufacture. And this is the matte liquid version if you wanted more of that soft matte finish on the center of your face or wherever you like on your face. And I asked for the Auric Lashes and I'm an Ardell person. I was intrigued by Samantha's brand. I have Auric, I have the Rate, what is it called? This as well as her iPods. But when I looked at the lashes, I was like, oh, those are nice. Because when I read that the band is made out of cotton, I was interested considering that cotton might be a little easier than plastic. Or when I had used to wear super glamour lashes back in my early YouTube days, I felt the band was hard and not malleable and these looked appealing to me. So I picked these up in, in Clouded and it's called the Velvet Flutter Collection. The Clouded ones are like the softer ones and you see here they have the full and the half or I'll show you the half in the B-roll when I apply them. And let's get into the groundwork swatches and a few words about groundwork briefly, if I may. I was intimidated by Groundwork when it initially released. I didn't buy it right away. I thought about it a lot. Despite the rave reviews that I saw rolling in, and despite the beautiful looks that I saw on the internet using Groundwork defining neutrals, there was something about 
I guess the amount of shades in the palette that I didn't think I would be able to handle that I thought perhaps it was overwhelming. I decided to watch Danessa's Teach Me Tuesday when using groundwork and I would recommend that you watch all of Danessa's videos because her and her team always do a deep dive into her new releases, explaining the concept behind it, why she created this. And that provides context, I think, for the consumer to better understand the product, right? Because when those are disjointed, it's, it's tough for me as a consumer if I don't know anything about a product to figure out how how does this work and how can it work for me and I distinctly remember Danessa saying after speaking to several people whether professionals or everyday makeup wearers they express apprehension and unease when it came to eye makeup that eye makeup was one of the tougher points of their makeup application that they felt intimidated by and Danessa wanted to create a formula specifically called the velvet pomade that's found in groundwork that has like a nice zhuzh quality to it it's not a cream product it's not a powder product it's kind of like a cream to powder hybrid with the little powder sliver next to the velvet pomade pan and as you can see hopefully you did in the close-ups that these pans are magnetic so you could swap them in and out especially since blooming romance is releasing soon yes with the velvet pomade despite it appearing easy to use i can understand that there might be a little bit of a learning curve not with the product itself the formula itself perhaps figuring out what brush is best to use in your collection to get the best result and you'll see in the b-roll what i choose to do there but i wanted to first dive in using the groundwork palette with my brows i probably should have chose a more neutral color for my brows because Danessa knows brow colors. She developed the Benefit brow line, okay? And is still one of my all-time favorites. I use Goof Proof 3.5 now and will forevermore. This color I chose had a little bit of like a red tone to it, which was okay. I much rather use a pencil, but I recognize that I use a pretty thick eyebrow brush. And if I use something thinner, I could have had a better outcome with the brow stroke. So that's on me and something I personally need to practice. Next, I went with the Yummy Skin Water Serum on the center of my face just to try out the consistency. And it is like a liquid, but fairly easy to blend and get absorbed quickly into the skin. I followed with Danessa's Blurring Balm Powder and I used my Musoho brush. You're probably wondering, well, how come you didn't use Wayne's brushes? I didn't wash them yet. I didn't wash them yet and I wanted to use a synthetic brush. I typically do with the Blurring Balm Powder from Danessa because I could wash it more often. It's soft on the skin. Wanted to begin the demo with a Danessa base. And then I went in with the color, I believe, Chiseled, just to see how this would appear on my skin tone because Chiseled is giving slightly neutral cool. And you see there's a little bit of sculpt there. There's a little bit of a shadow there. I don't know if I would wear this every day, but I recognize how lovely this would appear on a photo, 100%. I decided to try the other shade. I think it was Harvest. And Harvest apparently is a favorite shade amongst groundwork users. And I decided to tap it on with a smaller brush because every time I see Danessa using groundwork, she usually taps on the product. And I followed with my Mizuho brush on both sides. I applied Harvest over chiseled, took some Harvest on the forehead, and I wanted to use Core. I'm well aware that Core is a shade that many use with uh, deeper complexions to uh, color correct around the mouth area, around the under eye, but I decided to see how this would do on the cheeks because I like the color, that warmth color, and I thought it blended well with Harvest. It gave me a little bit of that, I don't wanna say bronzy effect because it was too orange to appear bronze, but it gave me some warmth on the center of my face. I then went in with Mirage on the entire eye because the Velvet Pomade does remind me of the Blurring Balm. I don't think it's exactly the same formula, but I think it provides a softer matte finish and Mirage basically is close to my lid color. So I thought that was a great base color to begin with. Then I went in with Harvest through my crease. Something I recognize immediately is how easy these velvet palmes are to blend 
on the skin. And I think exceptional for a beginner because they have a skin-like finish, they move well, they don't move the skin. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure, you don't have to blend forever. And that is the advantage I think the Velvet Pomade has over a regular powder. Went in with a smaller pencil brush with bark to provide a little more definition on my lash line in a more diffused fashion. As you see here, I brought some on the outer lid for a little bit of smoke, followed with Sculpted with a shadow liner brush for a little more intensity along the lash line, and went in with the powder sandstone side on the inner corner and on the majority of my lid to provide a little bit of highlight. And something I wanted to mention and a critique I've heard about Groundwork is that the powder pans are quite small. I think that was intentional on Danessa's part because she had explained that the Velvet Pomade already has a matte finish to the formula and the powders are meant to use sparingly. And I think the size of the pan is to encourage that. You use the powders to perhaps change the nuance of the color, maybe provide a little bit of reinforcement in terms of holding power, but the Velvet Pomade is created designed to have that longevity to begin with. So I understand if you wanted to use more powder, but it's not meant for you to use a lot of powder, if you know what I mean. Went in with the Auric Clouded Lashes. You see the two lengths here. The top part of the compact has like the three quarter length and the bottom has the full length. Quite a flexible band. Now, <laughs> I had a little bit of trouble applying these lashes. It's been a while since I applied lashes with a band thick like this. And I don't think the three quarters were meant for my lash size or lash length because they do appear a little short here and why I had to apply mascara on the inner part of my lashes just so that they all combine together. But here's a close-up of the look. I think it turned out beautifully. Groundwork gives me 90 model vibes all the way and you can't go wrong with an all soft matte feel. It just provides that sophistication, is elegant and granted and there's so many different shades and groundwork that you can manipulate for your eyes to appear smoky, like late evening smoke or just enough daily smoke as well as for the rest of the face if you wanted to appear ultra sculpted or just a little bit of sculpt the more you use groundwork the more you get acquainted with it the more comfortable you become and that is and still happening with me which is why i feel need to hold off blooming romance i feel like i need to like settle with groundwork defining neutrals first now with these hourglass lipsticks when i saw the shades for their soft matte series I had to get Sparrow, which you see here is a neutral rose and reminds me of the Lisa Eldridge Velvets, not in a great way because when it comes to matte lipsticks, they are insanely delicate and you have to be careful with the amount of pressure you apply because one of them unfortunately arrived cracked. Sparrow fortunately did not and my favorite out of the three shades I requested because this color every day soft not too dark not too warm and orchid orchid my goodness this is my everyday just smoky brown lip and I adore this shade and I made a sad face because peony is the one that arrived damage but peony as I'm looking at this footage not too bad because when I was viewing myself on the viewfinder it appeared quite peachy and warm and I wasn't sure if I would wear this often the barrier of entry has already been raised unfortunately because of the broken bullet and now I have to apply this lipstick with the brush instead of just slapping it on like I can with sparrow and orchid but it's okay now that I'm looking at the footage peony is pretty maybe I can try it with a different eye look arrangement with the shades that are on my eyes and on my face. I also requested the Hourglass Lip Liner Shape and Sculpt Lip Liner in Candid number 5 because I thought this shade would pair well with all the three shades from the soft matte. Here I placed it all around the lip and used a lip pencil to apply it or rather combine it with Peony and anytime I pair like a warm brown with a peachy 
lip it brings me back to like high school it does plump my lip a lot it's not my most favorite lip combination because it just makes them look so like voluptuous i know a lot of people like that look but it's not my favorite okay but i did apply candid with sparrow and i think that is a better pairing color wise because they're similar it gives sparrow that little bit of reinforcement especially if it feathers and because it is matte it's not going to feather as much as their satin lipsticks but as you can see here i think the color match is more ideal for me and it would be also fine with orchid because i think candid was one of the darker shades provided for the soft 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 and sculpt lip liner line up smooth on the application for both the lipstick and the lip liner despite the fact that the lipsticks are matte and you have to be careful with the amount of pressure you apply just enough will distribute or apply color well you don't have to press hard even though it's matte it's incredibly smooth and silky and it has a nice feel on the lips despite it being matte my lips don't feel dry they feel comfortable and the color itself the color itself just does tremendously well in this finish anytime i encounter rose neutral brown anything and it's matte sign me up now we're getting to the brushes oh i requested wayne goss's face set i didn't request the eye set because i found to be more intrigued by the face set shapes over the eye ones and i was also requesting sonia's tradition select the limited edition release so i'm like i'm gonna get some eye brushes okay i can't i can't get everything you know what i mean and this is the brush that i was most intrigued by number one if i'm not mistaken let me pull up the uh, roster here because this is a sloped cheek brush it has that beautiful angle the first edition f1 angled cheek brush all made with psycho goat hair undyed i believe and oh my gosh the flare on this brush i adore angled cheek brushes because of how they naturally hug the contours of your face it just makes it intuitive next we have the f2 which is a small round domed cheek brush up next we have the f3 which is the powder brush i believe let me double check here i'm like looking at b-roll and scrolling through the product page yes we have f3 the big fluffy powder brush you know it's wayne goss he loves his big fluffy powder brushes nice taper at the tip you see here a nice mobility with the bristles ultra soft the f4 foundation brush this was one of the ones i was anticipating highly anticipating because i think it's unique with its flat top design but it's pinched ferrule so it's almost like a rectangle and you almost have like a stippled design to it because you have various lengths bundled in the ferrule and what i used in the b-roll to apply my foundation and now we have the f5 a wispy long haired cheek brush that can be used for blush but i like to use it for applying loose powder and just finishing overall getting into sonia's brushes selects for 2024 as sonia writes on her blog sweetmakeuptemptations.com this is a spin-off series off her recently released kiyaki kakishibu set which i would highly recommend recommend you have your eye on i have a full video reviewing the kakishibu set and it is outstanding this limited edition set is available as a bundle or individually but because it will not be restocked once it all sells out that's why it is limited playing with different bristle types here and we first start with ts1 the small smudger brush made with white canadian squirrel and undyed psycho goat hair and it likens to the t1 from the kakishibu set except it has a different mix which is why the ts1 is recommended to be only used with powders next up we have the ts2 this beautiful shader my goodness squirrel and undyed goat hair match made in heaven you have incredible pickup but a soft diffuse blend primarily from the gray squirrel hair the ts3 it was widely requested that sonia bring back one of or the brush that likens to the ts3 it was i think made with yellow canadian squirrel but because she couldn't get those materials 
the TS3 had to settle on white Canadian and Undai Saikoho Go. This shape is goaded from Sonia because if you if you know the T3 from the Kakishibu set, because this brush, although pointed, has enough body for great pickup and you can use one side or any side of the brush because it's round on the lid to place product and then take the tip through the crease and maybe place more product on the outer lid and then take it you could just use this one brush and this is what the TS3 can also deliver because of its shape. But like all the brushes in the select collection, recommended that you use with powders only and ideal for a softer diffused blend on the eyes. If you like eyeshadow but you're not looking to apply a ton but just enough to offer some sculpting, some shaping to the eyes, then this is the one. And lastly, we have TS4. And my apologies, I seem to have forgotten to <laughs> include b-roll of ts4 but not to worry because i have it right here ts4 is yellow canadian and you see it is a pencil brush smaller than the ts3 so this is more suitable for precision work will leave more of a diffused finish versus the ts1 smudger if you wanted more precise application of color along your lash line you would rely on the ts1 smudger but if you're looking for a more diffused blend on the lash line where you don't want it to be precise you just want a darker color on the lash line to provide a little bit of smoke but need to build it up towards your outer lid and bring a little bit through the crease maybe bring some color here on the lower quarter of your lash line then ts4 is exceptional for that yellow canadian squirrel beautifully soft and especially if you have sensitive eyes and you're able to use animal products on your face because these are animal hair brushes. If you won't experience any strange allergic reactions, then you cannot go wrong with these brushes. They're softer than the Kakishibu set. So if you're looking for a softer brush experience in that set, which is already soft by the way, but these are definitely softer. Again, the caveat is you're recommended to use powder products only with the select collection just to keep in mind let's go into the brush demo because i know you've been waiting for it using the f4 with my suku foundation because i've just been using this foundation right away and i immediately detected how soft the f4 is on the skin and because of the brush's shape i primarily used it as you see here paint down i tried the pouncing but because it is undicycle ho goat hair it's not the the softest when you pounce the brush on your skin like I did I just wanted to play around with the different application techniques I think ideal to primarily use this brush paint down method buffing in a circular fashion because if you have the side of your brush in contact with your face I think that will yield the best experience sensory experience from brush to skin I wanted to see how it would do under the eyes and it is rather large for under the eyes and you're like duh this is foundation yes this was just for hypothetical situation if you were caught in a jam couldn't apply concealer you forgot your concealer brush you forgot your sponge what to do i would just use my fingers because it, a smaller brush i think is more ideal and why i reached for one of my sonia brushes and here i went into groundwork and used the f5 to apply a little bit of that powder it's nice under the eyes because this brush is quite wispy and i think ideal to not only apply under eye powder especially if you don't need a ton you don't want a dense application of makeup there but just more of a lightweight application of powder as well as all over the face the longer bristle and not as dense brush design won't leave behind as much makeup on the skin especially if you're not a powder wearer this is an ideal brush to get more of a lightweight application from your powder products but to still get a little reinforcement from your makeup if you wish to achieve that going into the f3 because i do like a big powder brush however because the bristles are shorter they're tapered on the f3 versus the f5 i think this more ideal to apply product but you most certainly can use it to apply powder which will apply more than the f5 right F5 is giving wispy, F3 is giving full bodied, if you know what I mean. Going into groundwork and I decided to use, I believe the F2, yes, the small dome brush to apply desert. And I remember Danessa speaking about 
what she thought was the best application method for the velvet pomade and she recommended pouncing because if applied in this manner as you see here it's not going to lay down as much product as if you pounce the pomade on but i do love how the f2 feels i just wanted to experiment with the brush because this size is exceptional for more precise application through the cheekbones as you see here and why I went with a color from Defining Neutrals that will provide it a little bit of sculpt but wasn't as neutral cool leaning as chiseled. And you can see that I'm swiping the brush because I didn't have much luck pouncing the brush into the velvet pomade. You can let me know down below friends what your experience was, what you thought was the best application method for the velvet pomade. I am using a natural brush maybe natural brush bristles are better suited for the swipe down versus the pounce in pounce in better for synthetic went in with harvest because i do like this color for more of that bronzy sculpty effect on the skin went over desert and that provided a little bit more body of color on my cheekbones and i followed with applying that color around the perimeters of my forehead and on the jawline. I wiped that off because I'm trying to use as many products as possible. Went in with Natasha Denona's Hypernatural Face Glam and use F1 right away to pick up that contour bronzer trio. And my goodness, the, the pickup is amazing with this brush. Because of the different tier length bristles in the brush head, it has nice grab, but because of that angle, it hugs the contour tours effortlessly and you could just feel where the product needs to go and I wanted to use the same brush with the blush pickup and my goodness <laughs> I apply a lot of the blush you can see here but both the blush and contour bronzer powders blended well and was just virtually easy to achieve with the F1. Definitely F1 might be my most favorite brush out of the Wayne Goss uh, face edit because you can't go wrong with an angled cheek brush, you know what I mean? I wanted to see how F3 would pair with the brushes and it is a little big for blush but you could just pick up product from, with one side of the brush and pounce it on the apples of your cheeks and not get out of hand with it. And of course, I wanted to use F2 for a more concentrated serving of color using the darkest color on the trio and just fit that higher on the cheekbones for a little more sculpting purposes. And from my experience, the, the Wayne Goss brushes are fantastic. They're easy to use. They feel incredibly pillow soft on the skin, but they have great pickup, especially with powders. Now, they might not be the best with Danessa's product, uh, her Defining Neutrals Groundwork, but that just might be a mismatch, and that's okay. I have plenty of brushes to experiment with, and I could get back and why I wanted to film with Groundwork exclusively and try different brush types with the Velvet Pomade. And I thought, as you see here, the F2 was pretty still small enough to place product on the side of my nose, and I followed with the F3 for an overall buff. Used... TS3 for this quick and easy eye look. Still using the Hyper Glam palette. And you can see, although the brush is round, it picks up the shadow beautifully and just blends it on my entire lid, carries it through the crease. I pull it down on the lower lash line using just one brush and one eyeshadow look to complete the entire thing. You can ask for a better experience. TS2 with the overlay shade. Beautifully soft and easy to apply. I had to also apply it on my inner corner here and the TS2 just viciously soft and it has nice flexibility but it's not too flexible for a shader brush if you're looking for something with a little bit of strength but softness just equally presented and expressed in TS2. You couldn't ask for a better shader brush. TS1, of course, with a smudge smudge because I love a color along the lash line. And Sonia smudgers are one of the best, if not best smudgers in my entire brush collection. Sonia knows how to design a smudger because I think that is a part of her eye routine that she struggled with the most or with one of the most and to create a brush that basically just holds your hand in precisely applying shadow along your lash line that looks soft, diffused, but neat 
at the same time, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have one of Sonia's shaders, specifically from the Select 2024 set and from her Kiyaki Kakushibu set. Okay. Now following up with Hourglass's Sparrow because I can't get enough of this color and I wanted to experiment with Natasha's wet effect shade. Why not? And I used the F5 because I needed something more wispy in terms of the application because this is quite a sparkly type of a shadow. You know what I mean? And it was distributed perfectly. It wasn't too heavy on the skin. It didn't look too glittery at all. And because of the brush head design, I was able to not only apply the wet effect shadow, but also buff it as well. And here's a close up with a light shining on the cheekbones, just so you can see that twinkling effect from that eyeshadow in the Hyper Face palette. And I adore how my look came out. I slapped on the Auric eyelashes, you know, we're giving soft daily glam. This came out beautifully well due to the tools, to the makeup, all right, and here I will have B-roll showcasing the Natasha Denona Mini Pastel Palette, and I will explain in more detail what I think about this palette, but I could only assume, just based on my experience with her previously released minis, that this would be nothing short of amazing. That the colors will be soft enough to have that diffused effect on the eyes, but will still have that beautiful twinkle, spring-like effect, and I thought it appropriate given the season that we are now in, approaching, that that mini pastel will be a ton of fun to use. And the Surat Beauty Souffle eyeshadow. Again, we'll be providing some iPhone B-roll here. I already know, I will adore this color. I will adore the finish of it. And yes, it is just one eye product and will encourage you maybe to buy less eye products that are cream in this way. They do dry out faster than an eye obviously a powder eye shadow product, but the ease of use, and listen, I, let me get it, let me get it now. We'll apply this now on camera. You would have already seen B-roll with me using this more extensively. Ooh, this is an interesting texture this is. It's almost bouncy. It's bouncy, but that's the color pickup, but it didn't change its look inside the pan. I do have Danessa's groundwork on the eyes, but we gotta try the Gredu because, oh, that's pretty. I knew I should have picked up this color. I had a hard time choosing family because, you know, they all look gorgeous. Oh, but look at that. The base color is like a taupe, but you have the gold reflex. My goodness, we gotta shine the light. Oh yes, oh, 100%. I know there are other shades in the eye souffle lineup, but I am flabbergasted right now by this texture. It truly is a souffle. See how the actual, it doesn't change? It's so bouncy and flexible. But look at the color pickup on that. Exceptional. Oh, that's pretty. It feels wet. It feels wet to the touch. Almost like you'll break the, the souffle. <laughs> like if you go into a souffle, right? You gotta use a spoon and break into that thing. But this actually maintains its shape. And just from this, it's like how, will this eyeshadow ever be finished, you know what I mean? Oh, I love it. Oh, that's pretty. All right, we love, we like all over the lid and maybe go with defining neutrals to sculpt a little bit through the crease, maybe add a little bit of tourmaline on the lash line for that extra smoke effect. Also, groundwork can be used. I know I just skipped from Surat from groundwork, excuse me. All over face, eyes, and lips. You can use these shades for lip. Now, I did try that. I think I might have, did, I don't know if I have B-roll. I do have a photograph, I think, showcasing groundwork, using it on eyes, lips, and face. And I do like how the lips turned out. I think it's just a matter 
of experimenting with all the shades and which one works best with your complexion, with your lip color, and how you want your lips to appear. You got to choose the right pair in order for the lips to look natural or maybe you want them to look ultra sculpted. It really is up to you but the dial is in your hands you have a, a ton of different undertones and intensities provided for you in groundwork where you just gotta play you gotta play and that's i think the point of this palette it encourages play it encourages experimentation and remember the powders are meant to slightly change the color of the velvet pomades it's not just for reinforcement because it does change the color a little bit when i applied i think it was sculpted on my outer corner for today's look when i went in with the powder although the powder appears lighter than the velvet pomade this darkened the velvet pomade shade on the lid and another thing to notice how the velvet pomades appear in pan appear a lot softer on the skin which gives opportunity to build it up as you like if you want it to appear soft initially or you want to build up the intensity you can but you build up the intensity with the powders and again the pans are small enough because you don't need much you don't need much of these powders to alter the intensity of the velvet pomades if you wish to go that route and again i'm looking forward to experimenting with it more there are a lot of products that i requested for this video and of course i have other reviews for products that are available for purchase on Beautylish. Again, more Sonia G, Natasha Denona, Danessa, Hourglass. I guess the last Hourglass product I picked up was their face palette. Don't know if that is still available. The Surat Beauty? <sighs> Let me know if you got the eye souffles. I am just shocked right now. I was not expecting that consistency whatsoever and i am completely in love with it and as you know if you don't know i stopped using skincare six months ago and this is a nice opportunity if you are using skincare to pick up on some favorites but one skincare item that i use continuously that is also available on beautylish is bioderma micellar water which i use to remove my eye makeup and face makeup before i go in with my soap to remove any residue but what i primarily use especially if i'm filming reels and i need to do several eye looks and have to remove in between takes this is what i rely on mostly but that is it friends i hope you had fun window shopping with me if you will and checking out how these products worked i'm immensely happy with everything especially the brushes i was looking forward to finally trying wing goss's newer brush release because he is rebranding and these are different from previous releases and i don't mind whatsoever filming a separate video with the first edition face set from Wayne, comparing it to his previously released brush collections. One of my most favorite from him is his Ardent Edit series and the limited edition dyed goat hair series with the calligraphy brush handle design with the exposed wood. One of my all time favorites from Wayne and another reason why I didn't pick up his eye set because my Wayne Goss eye brush design desires are fulfilled from that artist edit series where all the brushes were tapered. They were tapered but something I recognize is that the ones from the newer eye set I found looked they look stiff on the side but I don't know if they were unwashed or washed for that photograph whereas the ones from the artist series have more flair and movement to them and I thoroughly enjoyed using those brushes for my crease blending and just yielding a more diffuse look on the eyes that was soft and feathered because of that brush design so I am satisfied with my Wayne Goss eye brush knees with that set but I would love to make comparisons with with his previous brush collections as well as dedicating a video to Sonia Select set if you like and I don't mind doing separate videos definitely for groundwork and for Natasha's pastel mini because you know how I love to create several looks with one palette if not a dedicated video you'll probably see a YouTube short using the pastel mini and other recommendations that you probably saw in the b-roll of course is Natasha's hyper natural face palette her 
concealers, all of Sonia's brushes, again, that I have videos on, and I'll create a playlist of the most recent releases from those brands that are will be available during the gift card event so it is easier for you to navigate. And again, those videos will have timestamps if you just needed to see a particular product in action. Thank you again to Beautylish for collaborating with me once again on their gift card event for this spring. I'll see you down in those comments, family. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here with another review tutorial, a brush video, or a YouTube short showcasing one of these makeup products. Take care, and I will see you again soon.